What do you think of when you hear DNA of a man? What the fuck? Like, what is the DNA of a man to you? And then maybe what the world is putting on it. Really? I think it's the strength, right? Like, that's what it all comes down to is strength and strength used wisely. So, like, I think personally my job is to protect my wife, to take care of my wife, to make my wife feel, like, safe. Same thing. I mean, it's weird to talk about my boy right here, but... Like to protect him, to keep him safe. And then also if I see things happening that are unjust, to step the fuck up and be the one that stops it, right? And cheers to that. Yeah. I just yeah, want to right? say cheers there, to that. There, I, cheers I think to that. that I think that being a man like has a responsibility that's just different. What's going on, everyone? I'm Anthony Williams, and we are back. Of course, I'm sitting here with the man, Mr. Derek Vandy. What's up, everybody? And then we have the fucking the man, the myth, the fucking legend. This fucking guy over here has been fucking following you for a long-ass time. I'm going to let you go ahead and uh, just introduce yourself real quick. Oh, and I'm Rob Bailey. <laughs> I love that. Rob he was Bailey, in, I'm yeah. just Rob Bailey. Look him up. Look this motherfucker up. Look this motherfucker up. And then we also have Mr. Austin, Mr. Rags. Yep, I'm here. Yes, yes, Rags on Instagram, right? Yep. R A G Z. R A G Z. The only yes, one. Yes, that's a good one. It I is paid. A good I one. paid Bro, for that. I was like, he bought it for like seventy five bucks. Yeah. Did you yeah. really? Yeah. Not I mean, I said, price, hey, you though. interested in selling this handle? And uh, the kid said, yeah, name your price. And I was like, I'm not playing this fucking. I don't know, fifty bucks. And he was like, seventy five. And I was like, yeah, I would have gave him a couple grand. <laughs> so it worked out. That's fucking. Epic. And one before we get started on this, please go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Also hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a podcast, a video, a vlog, whatever it may be. What is your Instagram though? So, they, so the uh, world can know. So it's Kill Rob Bailey. May which ask, is great for the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> May I ask why? Uh okay, so there's multiple reasons. So uh started making music honestly in like the year two thousand. And we were recording in the Bronx in a closet in like an apartment. And the problem was it was like 4 a.m. My voice was blown out. And if any of you guys have used Pro Tools, you know that it saves like all the audio clips in files and they're not named. They're just like clips. So I needed one more big scream. And uh, my boy Charlie was like, it's somewhere in here. So he grabbed like 10 little audio clips, dropped them to see what it would say instead of opening up the files, like just back in files and it lined up as and it said kill rob bailey and i was like oh, that's weird so i started printing kill rob bailey shirts just because of whatever and just giving them out to people uh in college and then when we were sort of starting up my youtube channel and all that uh the concept of like killing the current version of myself and reinventing myself seemed really cool so that's fucking epic. yeah always trying to always trying to get better right so real quick, give the audience what is your uh, what is your YouTube all that so we oh, can so go ev ahead and drop it. Yeah, everything's under everything's under Kill Rob Bailey. Everything is uh, okay. all my personal shits under Kill Rob Bailey. Yeah. I love that. Kill Rob Bailey dot com, Kill Rob Bailey uh, Instagram, Kill Rob Bailey. Um, my band's called Kill Rob Bailey. Everything's Kill Rob Bailey. That's fucking epic. Thanks, That's bro. epic, my dude. Well, I do know you just launched a new company to help entrepreneurs achieve. Oh. Uh, you know, achieve greatness within maybe, the, I don't know, it's maybe within their mindset and along yeah. those things. So um, I'd like to ask you, what do you think that you offer that other people don't? And how do you, how do you see that, how you can uh, help someone grow their mindset? Or are you just fucking doing it because you think it's fucking fun and like, you're like. A little bit, a little this. bit of everything, right? So um, my boy called me up once. He's like, yo, start a fucking coaching group. And I was like, nah, man, I'm not that dude. Like, I'm not a business coach. I don't know fucking business. I'm not like. I don't know everything, right? And I feel like majority of the business coaches out there are sort of gross. Like, I, I feel like they're constantly telling you, like, do this. Like, like, I feel like they're just yelling at you the whole time, telling you what the fucking deal is. And I, oftentimes I can't relate to them, right? And I think the one thing that I've done really well in life is um, I've, I have, like, the exact life I want. Like, I'm a pilot. I have an airplane. I have all the cars that I want. I collect 911s. I have like a fantastic fucking marriage. I work with my friends. I only work on projects that I love. I own real estate that I want to, I live where I want. Like I live by my own fucking rules. Right. And 
I've made it work. And one thing that I figured out is like, if I really want to do something, there's a way to fucking do it. There's a creative solution. There's a different way to look at it where I can figure it the fuck out. And I guess I've realized that like even making music, like I've never been on a, a fucking record label, but I've been 13th on the billboard charts. I've been in multiple movies, commercials, all that shit. And I just put out music of me screaming the same thing over and over and it works, you know? And I think I just realized like there is a recipe, right? And there, it's not the same recipe for everybody. And in starting a coaching group, I realized that like most people don't know what they want in life. Like I, f I feel like the world is fucking people up right now. Instagram's fucking people up. So people are so overwhelmed that they go to Instagram, they go somewhere and they see you and they see me and they're like, well, that's what I want to do. But it's not actually what they want. They have no fucking clue what they want. They can't make decisions and it's fucking hard, right? And it's hard for me. And if I'm crushing life and it's hard for me, it must be hard for the average person. So when I started a, a coaching group, I didn't want to start a coaching group where it was like just business and like all this nonsense. Like I want to start a coaching group where you can sort of figure life out. Like what do you truly want to be better at? Do you want to be a better father? Cool. Let's work through that. Do you want to be a better fucking husband? Do you want to be a better friend? Do you want to be a better employee? Do you actually want to own your own business? Because not everyone's meant to own your own business, but that's like the cool thing right now to be an entrepreneur. And it's like, I think the greatest part of my group is him. Like everyone, it's great to relate to him because he's my number two, man. So like he realizes. Yeah, I feel like I had to get to him to get to fucking you. Yeah. And, and that's and, weird and, for me. I know. <laughs> I know. That's weird for fucking me, Bro, okay? It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not like a flex. Like I think a lot of people do that as a flex. I do it because I think like two years ago I realized, I was like, no, I want my life. And there's so many people want to reach me and like, I'm just getting fucking tired uh, where I just don't want people to access me. Right. And I don't care if I miss out on opportunity. I don't fucking care about anything. So he's sort of like my gatekeeper of like, no, nah, no, nah, like this is real shit. And I, I, we obviously talk, but uh, I just stopped looking at my phone. Like I don't care as Good much for you. about my phone. Like Good I for love you. it. Yeah. I changed my phone number. Like, was that part of the reason you moved out to Montana? Uh, Wait, when did you change your phone? You didn't give me your new phone number. Uh, yeah, I got my new phone. Number. I, <laughs> so yeah, dude, not that many people have it. I changed my, my like my family I doesn't have it. I texted you the like, other day and I was like, this. And went to my old phone. <laughs> I was like, this motherfucker didn't respond yeah, to me. I don't go fuck. I'll give him my old phone. Number. So I still have both phones. I just don't look at my old phone anymore. Yeah, good I don't even for know you. where it's at right now. Yeah. Good for you, man. Thanks, so man. what is the name of their company? Uh, so people can know. so clear, calculated, and vicious. And I think that uh, w dreams on the front of it, but that doesn't sound as smooth as CCV. So we encourage people to dream because I think that's like the biggest, easiest thing that's been stolen from people. When you grow up, it's like, what do you want to be? And they're like, I want to be an astronaut. They're like, good job, Tommy. Have fun. Like, you're going to be an astronaut when you grow up. And you're like, and then you're like 13. And they're like, hey, man, maybe, uh, you know, maybe like a, a janitor or something. Or like, you. Uh, I remember when I was like 13, and they're like, what do you want to do? I was like, I want to play in the NBA. And they're like, no, yeah, there's no way. I was like, my guidance counselor at 13 years old told me there was no way I'd play in the NBA. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not even done growing. Who the fuck are you? Like, it was the weirdest thing ever. And then uh, even when I was like 18, right, I was winning all the fashion shows in high school. I was sewing clothes, um, super fucking artistic, and then also crushing it in sports. I wanted to go to art school to be a fashion designer. And my parents were like, no. Like, that's not a real profession. Like, art's not a real thing. You know, we're talking 1999. So, like, there was no internet. So, my parents were like, you know, starving artist? Like, fuck that. You're going to go to school for something else. Um, so, I just sort of stopped dreaming. And I took, like, six years off, essentially from life. Like, I was like, all right, well, I'll just go through the motions. And at one point in time, I started dreaming again. I think that's what we start in the group. Like we encourage people like, no, like fuck limitations. Like forget all that shit. Forget how you're going to do it. Forget how you're going to get there. Forget where the money or the capital is going to come from. And let's just like enjoy dreaming. So I encourage people to dream, then get extremely clear on their dream, then get extremely calculated based on how clear their dream is. And then I think only after you're calculated, can you attack something viciously, right? So the vicious parts, like I think what people can't get to because everything else is so muddy. So we just sort of like run people through that. And it's not, it's not specifically for entrepreneurs. It's, it's, it's for fucking anybody. And it, it feels, yeah, anyone in life. So it's like, it's weird to be a life coach, but I feel like a lot of the stuff in our, in our group is just fun. 
and I'm just there to hold you accountable, right? Like I'm, it's almost like joining an intramural basketball team where it's like, you're not going to go play basketball, but if you have a game every Wednesday night, you're going to show the fuck up and at least play basketball every Wednesday night. So like, if I can at least help people there with keeping people somewhat accountable to trying to figure out life, fuck you. That's awesome. I love that you said astronaut and I was going to show you like, so the Ooh, I like that. Yeah. So I got this tattoo because it, it reminds me always to chase my dreams because every kid when they're younger yeah. always wants to be an astronaut. And so that's literally why I got this tattoo. So are, what are you doing I'm to not work an astronaut. towards your space goal? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, actually. I don't want I to be an astronaut. All right, all right. But it was more of the principle. So your that, dreams have changed. No, it's, I, did, I actually never dreamed to be an astronaut. It okay. was more of the yeah. fact that it just reminds me to never stop chasing my dreams. Yeah. And like that's why it's cool. Because that's like, like the biggest that. one. Everyone like, astronaut, wants to dude. be a. F- I literally yeah. I, like you. I can ask Megs. I always say like when I the reason I got this tattoo is because when you ask a kid what do they want to be, fucking ninety percent of yep. them I want to be a fucking astronaut. So for me, I got. And this then tattoo. no one pursues that. No, like, no one fucking does. I don't, but I don't even know how you would. Bro, it's too much work. Yeah, it's too much. Like when you work. graduate high school, you're like, and now I go to astronaut school. <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna go to fucking Mars to be come an astronaut you know yeah. what I, mean? like, I don't know but that's, that's just funny that you said that because that's literally the only reason i have that tattoo is because I dig it. every kid wants to be an astronaut yeah. so i was like fucking i'm putting it on my body to make that fucking happen <laughs> that's good so do you yeah. find out that like most people when they come into your program that they don't even know what they want uh yeah well i think i think most people come in the program and they think they know what they want uh-huh. right and then i like challenge them to actually like we, we even do vision boards, right? So I encourage everyone to post their vision board. And it's almost like, you motherfuckers, like it's, you're just copying, pasting everyone else's. Like they're like, I want stacks of cash, a Lambo, a house, financial freedom, a big truck. And it's like, is that really, those are your goals in life? Like, do you like just, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I get it. Like everybody wants money because money takes, it normally facilitates everything. You want more gives time? Opportunity. Money gives you opportunity. But I think that people just, they, that's just what they think they want, right? Like, mm-hmm. you want that perfect Instagram feed. And it's like, nah, think about it, man. Like, what do you actually want? Like, my favorite thing in fucking life is cutting firewood. <laughs> it <laughs> is fun. Like, it's right? absolutely fun. Dude, like, I got multiple chainsaws. Like, I sharpening a chainsaw blade and cutting down trees. Hands down, my favorite thing to do in the fucking world. You give me a Sunday of that. But, like, people don't put that on their vision board. And that's sort of what I'm trying to come to. Is like, what do you actually really fucking like to do? So, trying to challenge people more than just, like, the simple materialistic stupid shit that is once you learn how to get it is essentially easy to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think the big that. thing too, to add to that is like the big thing about the group is helping people change their mindset too. So like if you, if you give someone with a bad attitude and a bad mindset, a bunch of money, that's just a prick with a bunch of money. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what like working people through the program has come to show that that's like really the clarity they get. I love it. Y'all, y'all, I saw, I, been saying for years I want to come out with a company called Mindset Alternators. Mm-hmm. That's literally what y'all are doing. So I guess I can't do it because I can't fucking compete. So bro, you can do everything. <laughs> I mean, touche. I mean, that's you can do like... it from space. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when I become a fucking astronaut, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So this podcast is called DNA of a Man. What do you think of when you hear that? Like, what do you think of when you hear DNA of a Man? What the fuck? Like, what is the DNA of a man to you? And then maybe what the world is putting on it. So I think like, ooh, I like it. Uh, <laughs> so I, I feel like the male characteristics are like. This is the first like, time I've ever heard you like. They're under, but, well, they're under attack, right? So I don't want to get like too political or too fucking weird. No, go for it. But fuck, I, whatever you, fuck the algorithm. I, I think it's the strength, right? Like that's what it all comes down to is strength and strength used wisely. So. Like, I think personally my job is to protect my wife, to take care of my wife, to make my wife feel, like, safe. Same thing. I mean, it's weird to talk about my boy right here, but, like, to protect him, to keep him safe. And then also if I see things happening that are unjust, to step the fuck up and be the one that stops it, right? And Cheers to that. Yeah. I just want to say cheers to that. I, I that. I think that being a man, like, has a responsibility that's just different, right? And it's not, like... The responsibility of a man is better than the responsibility of women. No, we just have different skill sets and different responsibilities. And obviously right now, they want strength to go away. They want us to be confused. They want us to be soft, be scared to speak up, to be divided, right? Like it's, 
it's all intentional. And I understand that. I understand branding and marketing and, and fucking manipulation. Like, I get it. And it's actually easy to understand that. It's so fucking easy. So open your fucking eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Once you once you understand that remotely, you're like, I see exactly why all this is happening. But yeah, I think that's the responsibility of a man and lead by example. And I think there's a lot of honor to it. Um, one of the logos that we came up with uh, originally was based on my two grandfathers. So I, I had two grandfathers that like really, really raised me. And one was a ship captain from Newfoundland way up there in Canada, right? And it hit, so his dad was a, a shipbuilder, and he taught me, like, to fear the ocean, first of all, because he was shipwrecked a few times. So he was like, he wouldn't let me go in the ocean, like, terrified of the fucking ocean. He was on, uh, in the, the top mast, uh, and they were down in, like, the key, or somewhere down south, and, like, his guys were swimming and got, like, slaughtered by sharks. So he, like, witnessed that. He's seen some wild shit. Uh, shipwrecked when he was 16 years old. They sent a dog, swam to shore with a rope, and then, like, the uh, the people on the island pulled in everyone off the ship. Like, crazy fucking stories. But he taught me, like, honor, respect. This is how you act in public. This is how you stand when there's other people around. This is how you, you know, you, you speak when you're spoken to. Like, this is the expression on your face. Like, he was always my compass whenever I looked to him. And then my other grandfather had zero fucking education, right? So he was the one that was, like, uh, at night working as a janitor, during the day working in the coal mine, like just like hard nosed dude, just making it fucking happen, whatever he did hard work wise to get it done. So we came up with the axe anchor logo. So the anchor for the ship captain and then the axe for my other grandfather just taught me how to split wood was like, this is how you heat your, heat your house. You split fucking wood, you stack wood. This is what we're going to do all day. And that's what we did together. And like to me, it, it, they both sum up what a man does like right he he takes care of he provides he acts with honor and you end up you have a code like did, i don't know all the rules to the code but i'm sure if i sat down and like wrote them out you could figure them out and uh i just it's getting lost right very much so yeah so do you think those pressures um are brought on by the world because there are pressures right they're, they're, let's yeah. be honest they're pressures yeah. and i asked this i asked this question to everyone we interview and then they answer this question this similar like not similar but kind of close to it uh, do you think those pressures are brought on to you by yourself or by the world um i, th I, th I think honestly they're by myself i I, tr I truly truly do it's something that like so i've gone through like a weird not weird but um He's witnessed the whole thing. He's been he's been with me for what eight years? Uh, going on nine years. Yeah, going on nine years. So I think that like when I started out, I was like the super alpha fucking dude, like all these different things, and then I started to sort of change who I was to manage employees and try to like do like build all these relationship things. And I think that looking back, I I didn't lead, I didn't lead with the confidence that I should have to build out teams and I didn't lead with like all the things of the, the code of a man that they should have the honor, the integrity, all those things, because everything I sort of questioned to try to provide a relationship with staff that I thought that I, I thought that should be there. Right. Like I thought I should be softer. I thought that, and I think that there, there is a respect to like confidence. Right. And that's something that we talk about in the group. Uh, my friend, Aaron Singerman, right. We call it, we call it Aaron mode. Everything he does, Aaron's he does. Yes. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Aaron right now. I told him, I'll give him a yeah. shout out. Whenever he's in prison, he'll be out soon. Uh, yes, fucking, I've been following the story. Dude, I've been following I Aaron email him. Singerman. I email him. We email twice a day. And dude, he's just fucking eating prison. Like he, I've never seen a stronger and it's fucking bullshit. mind, Let's dude. Be honest. It's, it's fucking, fucking bullshit. 100% bullshit. It's 100% bullshit. bullshit. But dude, government. he, his, <laughs> the way. I was like, I can't, I can't do prison. Fuck that. It would eat me alive. And dude, he is a fucking, a, like a mental monster. I've never seen anyone like, he's growing more inside prison now. He's, he's fucking reading two books a day. He's going to come out and take over the fucking world. I love it's, it. It's, I, I've, I, so I've watched that whole thing I'm playing yeah. and it's crazy to see how like he is taking it on because it's like, it's a yeah. scary thing, Yep. but he's taking it on. He's just like, I'm going to fucking eat this. Yeah. And like what he's going, to, it's like, I, I personally believe it's bullshit. Yep, it is. I'm not going to like yeah. try and talk about it too much, but I think it's bullshit um, just from what I've done. But I, of course I, there's, there's always three, you know, sides there's a bunch of sides to it. I mean, yeah. I was, I was there for the whole thing and it's, I can, I can say it's fucking bullshit. I think it's bullshit oh, yeah. too, yeah. 
but like like I just you know and I'm I'm but, excited to see like how he comes on the other side yeah. because it's like to me that is the true definition of like becoming the man the DNA yep. of a man is like yeah. any obstacle that comes your way as long as you're not the fucking person that's gonna fold yeah it doesn't fucking matter what you go through yeah you're gonna come out on the other side fucking one hundred percent and that's untouchable and that's exactly why we we say Aaron mode because like. He makes decisions when I would sit back and think a little bit, like what are the repercussions here? You know, what's the meaning behind this? Like I would get too deep into it. And he almost, he acts with such certainty with everything. And then even if it's the wrong decision, he just corrects with certainty. And I think that's like, that is the duty of a, of a man, right? Like it's, you have to act with, act with confidence because people are relying on you. And then also when you make a mistake, admit you make the mistake, but then correct with confidence. So I think acting with confidence, that's something we talk about in the, in, the, uh, in the group, which is like your personal brand book. Like everybody knows what a brand book is, right? Like these are my Pantone colors. This is my logo. This is my padding around the logo. This is how the logo is used. This is my mission statement for the brand. This is the words that we use to describe the brand. This is the core values for the brand. This is the photography style for the brand. And one thing we talk about in the group is like, what's your fucking brand book for who you are, right? Like, when you get dressed, what do you look like? How do you see yourself? How do you act? What When someone responds to you, like e even me, right? Like I'm a bigger dude, but when on the street, if someone comes at me hard, like I respond fucking calm and under control because I know, like I'm not led by emotion. I don't make emotional decisions in heated moments. Like that's part of my brand book, right? If someone screws me over, like part of my brand book, how I handle it's a certain way. So we encourage people to establish your own brand book so you can respond, same thing, with confidence because instead of being in the emotional moment, you thought about who you were prior to this. So you formed habits to how you react to things. So if some guy comes up and yells at you, you don't just act based on how you feel. You're like, no, let me de-escalate. Let me make sure the situation's fine. You know, you handle it properly based on who you think you are. So something we really work on in the group is like, who, who, who are you? And I think that like when you think about that, in a really good state of mind, like, yeah, you, the DNA of a man is right there, right? Like, if you're thinking about who am I in the middle of a road rage, you're like, I'm a fucking monster. I'm going to get out and punch this dude in the face. But then if you're calm and you think about that, what would I do in that situation? You're like, oh, I'd probably just let him go or like wave at him to make him like you'd handle it much different. So that that understanding of how you're going to act in those situations, your personal brand book is, I think, one of the biggest things we try to build. That's so dope. We d we just did a podcast yesterday with uh with Q. We'll uh, we'll put that in the description uh, down below as well. Um, and he's a very good. He's like a very good friend of ours. Very good, like kind of like a mentor in certain ways. And um, and he says the DNA of a man is the confidence of a man. Mm -hmm. How you hold yourself, but also know when to say, you're right. Yeah. And 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 and. And the way he talks about it is, and he actually answered the question kind of the same way that you did yeah. is, is like in that, the, the fact of knowing both sides of things. I and mean, like, he just says like, you can still be confident and fold. Yeah. And I think that like one of the most confident things is folding, right? Like if you're wishy-washy and like, you can't admit that you're wrong, like that's not confidence. Like if, 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 if I screw up with my wife and like the whole time I just want to fight her and argue, it's like. I'm arguing because I'm unconfident in who I am. If I'm confident, I can say, like, nah, I fucked up. Let me correct and readjust because I'm a confident person. I know I can readjust and admit and get better. Uh, yeah, the cool thing about confidence, it's kind of trippy. If you're really confident in yourself, no one will know if it's real or not, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, if you're fully confident in yourself, no matter how you act or how you display it, that's what confidence is. They don't know if it's real, if, if you really believe in yourself. As, as Q said, you only care if you care. Yes. <laughs> I and like it's that. so funny yeah. because it it's so good. simple, but he literally sat here yesterday and said, you only care if you care. Yeah. And that's like, I was like, damn. Yeah. Like, he's like, walk into a room as if you care, but don't care if the person that's sitting there looking at you, judging you, don't care. Yeah. He's like, so you only care if you actually care. And like, I know that's like a weird saying and it's a weird term, but it, it makes sense. It's fucking, it's fucking dope. It's fucking I like it. dope. I like and it. that's one of the things, like, caring held me back for so long because I cared what people thought about me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I started like, nah, I don't care anymore. Whatever. Yeah. Just throw out content. Who cares? Now it's like blowing up. Yeah. 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 You realize like how much people don't give a fuck, man. They don't. They like, don't care uh, at all. 
No. And I, and all actually, they just want to see something. They just want to see shit. Yeah. They, they don't, they don't care. They, just they don't care if it's a divorce. They don't care if you got in a car accident. They don't give a fuck. One of like, my one of my biggest. If your Instagram videos, gets deleted, they don't fucking care. <laughs> I sit back and I laugh and I and I talk about this with Conrad because I feel so bad because Conrad gives me Conrad, aka Loverboy, aka Connie, aka Daddy, whatever the fuck you want to call him. <laughs> this this dude's got more nicknames. Than I don't want to call him Daddy. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, right? well, I Can know, I but him? he always right? you always ask him what his nickname is. He's like Daddy, and I'm like this <laughs> motherfucker. So like he's got more nicknames than a than a goddamn encyclopedia. But he works so long on these videos. Yeah. And then he sends them to me and they're fucking epic. And they like get a good amount of views. But then he takes a video on his iPhone of me eating raw meat and gets yep. 70,000 yep. fucking views in six hours. Yeah. And I'm just sitting back and I'm like, dude, like, I'm sorry, but you got to start fucking recording more videos on your phone of just me eating fucking random shit. Like, obviously, because that's the shit that gets fucking views yeah, now. People, people want to see real see. now. It's the real shit, yeah. It is. And it's like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, I'm eating raw meat. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. Like, let's try it out. I think it's a beautiful balance. Just just to give you some props. It's a beautiful balance, right? So I think that, like, you need that that quick content, that quick, blurry, rasterized fucking content where the audio clicks off, where it's like, oh, he's a real person. But then I think you also validate yourself with, like, that really good fucking content where it's like... You know, this is a banger video. Like, I got my shit together, right? Yeah. yeah, you validate yourself with the information that you're putting out, too. Like, I don't know if you guys are, like, into paid media and paid traffic on, like, Facebook and all that stuff. But the only thing that's really working right now is content that looks like it's user-generated. Yeah. And that's because it people are so used to just seeing something at high value and just cutting it off because it's too good. Um, and that's where, like, the personal style really comes in. And you get people to buy into, like, who you are and get a little bit more trust with like the iPhone type shit. So we do nothing paid. Everything that we've done and built has all been organic. Hell yeah. Never have we ever done any ads, anything along those lines. That's the way to do it. I mean, that's what's sustainable, right? It, it is. is. If, it, if Facebook shuts down today or if the algorithm gets fucked like it does every week and your business is built on that, then you're screwed. I mean, that's why Flag is built on organic. We don't have any paid for Flag. And that's because people believe in the ba the brand. They bought into the message. They brought in the Rob, Dana, and the content that we're putting out. You guys are consistent as hell. They are. You guys have been I consistent love that. forever. And I Yo, think that's one of the, Thanks, the biggest things is consistency. Mm -hmm. Also, go ahead and check out the Instagram. It's Flag Norfell. And then the website is flagnorfell.com. Yep. Go check them out. They drop merch. If I'm being honest with you, the fucking shirts that you're wearing right These now shirts are the, are the shirts fucking. I I, I've it. literally been like begging y'all to give me. We got you more on the way, from. right? We got I've been a couple like, on I the way. I need them. They fit the best. You can yeah. work out with them, and you can also kind of dress them up. Yeah. And you can wear. They're them all stylish. I wear. They're all I wear because I like in the gym. The the raglan cut looks fucking amazing. It's nice and thin. The fabric wears in really good. So that's all I wear. That's all I wear. I'll be I'll be shirt. honest with you. So like I liked the I love the fit of those. Yeah. The um I'm gonna be real with you. I don't give a fuck. No, I love it. Um, your joggers I was not a fan of. Which ones? Um, uh, yeah, the ones I'm wearing now. Be, the only reason oh, yeah. because I'm short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they so don't they, work on so me neither. They don't yeah. work on shorter mm -mm. people. And number two, um, your golf tees. Yeah, they suck. They weren't good. We're not making them this year because oh, of I wasn't so gonna that, say they it. suck. They're just a lot I'll smaller. Say, so that than that, the other that was sizes. his project. I. That was something. Ah, that so you fucked up. No, the, so <laughs> what, what, had, what had happened was the the mill uh, fucked up the fabric with an ex employee that we had um, yeah. who didn't really I, care I have, about the project. I have a really good golf brand that I've been coming up with. We should partner on. And I'm in. Good golf. Say brand. less. I'm I have down. actually. I have the best domain, and yeah, I'll tell you guys. Look after. at my post today. People, all they want to know is where'd you get that golf shirt at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bad, bad birdie. birdie. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, like, no yeah. disrespect to them. I think they're dope. They're, they started in Scottsdale. They have a local office here. Um, But I hate Bad Birdie. Why? I do not like their fucking designs. I do not like okay. their clothing. There's I, a gap. I, I, I don't, I don't, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a, a fun fact, side fact. I own every single one of their fucking shirts, though. <laughs> so I guess it doesn't fucking matter if I like them yeah. or not. I own every single one of them. So what, fuck me. What happened was, is you ended up buying all those and then... You found something that fits way better, and it's just game over since yeah. then. Yeah, and I don't. I'm not. I'm not about like I was for a while. Like, oh, I'm gonna go to the golf course because trying to make golf cool. And then they're crazy designs. Now I'm like, yo, I want to go back to my like dark, sleek fucking look. Like, why can't we come out with a colored shirt that's like this? That'd be fun yeah. for summer, right? So, I have another question because I started following you through your wife. Yeah, who's an absolute like 
and monster. Yeah. Like like monster is a good word. She is. I remember watching a video of her. Of uh, fucking, she was um doing lateral raises and fucking upright rows, and all I can remember was being like, "Yeah, I hope I never have to work out beside her because <laughs> I am genuinely terrified too." But like, I'm also uh, like, I need motivated. her delts and I need her uh, thighs. Yeah, I need <laughs> her quads. Like, I, I, no, I would be a hundred percent happy like having her physique. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I think I'd yeah. be so happy if I just woke up with her body tomorrow. I'd be like, all right, I'll fuck with this. Yeah, like, I'm good. With that yeah. like I, I would pay yeah. pop that. a dick on the front and I'm good to go. <laughs> it's rolling yeah. she's an absolute animal she's an absolute yeah. monster but she holds herself in such a high standard yeah. and I've respect that about her since the day I saw her and found her videos and she holds herself in such a feminine masculine way yeah and I say that in like it's like a very cool because a lot of women that I've seen in the bodybuilding world they either hold themselves very masculine yeah. or very too far feminine she holds herself in a way that's like, I'm here to get shit done. Mm-hmm. So like, I she has that alpha, but she's very feminine, which is fucking to me, it's fucking epic. It's yeah, incredible. yeah. She's a really interesting mixture, and uh, I mean, we can attribute it. That's to, why she's the best. To, that's why that's why she's the best, right? And we can we can attach so many things to it. Um, she's just like the perfect combination of so many different things, and I think that like one of them is she's never touched drugs which is like fucking nobody in the fitness industry f- does it without drugs, right? Like She has never touched. She's never. So like eventually I think people are going to believe her on the natural thing because she's been in it for 15 years and like you can still look at her and be like, oh, she still looks good. Name one other fucking girl in the fitness industry that at that size, not bikini, but like girls that carry muscle that in 15 years still look good. Dude, that is insane to me. What, I, th- I would have. Right? No, no, no. And, bro, I wouldn't believe either. Like, 100%, I'd be like, oh, no, this, there's no fucking way. But from day one, she was just like, I don't want to take drugs because I feel like they're going to fuck me up. And I was like, all right, cool, let's not do it. So the problem is no one saw the first five, six years of training. And training, like, way harder than anyone else. No, you guys yeah. you guys go hard. She, She's, I can't even train with her. She trains way too fucking hard. Yeah, I mean, and if you think she does it just on video, you're no, fucked. No, no, she no, posted no, a show no, no. the other day, and you I was know like, that's not just on video. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's crazy. not training that She's way. probably doing it right now, yeah. like, while we're fucking drinking beers on a podcast. So how much does she, how, how often does she work out? She works out every day, twice a day. Wow. So she, she does her training split every day, which is, like, an hour and 45 minutes. And then, like, shoulders, hour 45 minutes. And then she'll do Peloton. She loves Peloton now. She's all on that shit. So she'll do Peloton every morning. Wow, man. How, that's when when you me. went vegan, she didn't go vegan, though, did she? No, no, no. When I went vegan, she, to, like, to sort of hang with me, she uh, she dropped out. What was her? <laughs> she had the dumbest <laughs> she, rule. She had a leg rule. She, had a leg, she, she just went by legs. And she's like, if it has four legs, I won't eat it. So she was eating, like, chicken, turkey, because I got two legs. <laughs> I was like, all right, whatever... Whatever you want to do. That's dope. And then fish don't have legs. Mm-hmm. So she's still, it's weird. It's a weird rule. I That's like crazy. It. Well, I think y'all should go all beef. I know. You were, he, so you were trying to sell me that in the other room. Yeah. You were, uh, yeah. what'd you want me to eat? You eat brains, liver. Brains, liver, bone marrow, um, and you testicles because you're a male. So you should eat testicles, spleen, and kidney. Oh my God. All right, cool. So <laughs> take let, a shot. Take let, a shot for that one. I'm going to take a shot for that. Let's, I'll take a shot with you. Let's talk about, uh, Something I haven't talked about on a podcast yet, right? Okay. I'm not vegan anymore. Oh, shit. That's, a, that's me. I'm, I'm coming oh, out. Oh, shit. Rob's not vegan anymore. Yeah, I'm coming out of the uh, vegan closet. You know, I've been seeing a lot of people ask you. And I don't respond anymore. I, I've Because I don't feel that. like, I don't, I don't want the fucking smoke, right? <laughs> so, uh, so may I ask you. Yeah, I can tell you. Why are you not vegan anymore? And why To be 100%. Yeah. All right. So, I went vegan because I got goats. And goats were just like dogs, right? And I was like, shit, man. Like, all of a sudden, like, we started forming relationships with our chickens. And I realized that all of our animals were really cool pets. And some vegan people started blowing me up. So I dropped out some stuff, and I still held together. And then I started dropping out more. And I started realizing that, like, okay, cool. So the only reason I'm eating meat is for because I like it. Right. I don't have to. So then I started feeling guilty and started falling into the vegan world and like all that. So once I got there, I like sort of 
I liked it. I liked that I was still keeping size. I was still all together. Um, so I did that for five years. And, and to be completely honest, and it's, it's a crazy reason, and the vegans are going to hate me for this reason, but it was the last election. So I'm, I don't agree with everything Republican, but I'm generally on the Republican side for everything, right? Would you right? say libertarian? You're libertarian. Yeah, I just like freedom, man. Like, yeah. le- leave us the fuck alone. We're going to start a movement, man. Dude, That's what just, we need to do. Just give us some guidelines to operate in. And no. then, and then f- just Humans can <laughs> operate themselves. But brother, there has to be simple guidelines because there's some fucking bad people out there. Yeah, okay, we can fucking shoot them. What? Yeah, but there, okay, need, there, okay. but there needs to be some rules. I'm not, to be a, which, not trying to be a dick, which but I'm people fine. can govern themselves. No, I'm fine bro. with simple rules. No, no, no. See, I'll, I'll disagree with that. The average person's a fucking idiot. Yes. Right? Average okay, person. Okay, okay. Bro, you yeah. have okay. to realize. Bro, like, 80, we, yeah, 80 million people voted for yeah. Biden. The average person's a fucking idiot. We just, we just, we just don't surround ourselves <laughs> by you're, Okay, it, you're right, you're right. Because I, hang out, I pop, hang out with yeah. people. You're not around Gen that Pop. everyone yeah. <laughs> can fucking govern them goddamn yeah. themselves. Well, you hang around. I believe you have a different circle, right? So people, educated people who do well need to make simple fucking rules. Just like dodgeball, right? There's not that many fucking rules, but there's like, hey, this is out of bounds. Right? Like mm-hmm. pedophilia out of fucking bounds. Really simple. <laughs> you you go outside Too the shame. bounds and you touch a fucking kid, you then, get, then you get to shoot them. You get the fucking kid. <laughs> fucking easy <laughs> rules, Hang right? Hang them. So I think there needs to be easy fucking rules. But what, what fucked me up, right? And like, I don't really, like abortion for me is a weird one, right? I'm all like, okay, freedom. If you want to get an abortion, it sort of sucks. Like I personally, I don't think you should just because it seems wrong. Like, I don't know why I'm not a woman. I don't have a baby inside of me, but it feels wrong outside of religion, and everything like that. But if I go by my rule of like, you should be able to decide what the fuck you, you do. Yeah. Right. So sure. I'm that's sort of a, like, that's a tough one. It's, it's, it's a tough one. Right. So because I'm not s- totally set on it, I'm just, I guess I have to roll on the side of freedom. Like you make your own decisions, fu- but it's, but it's, it's morally, it feels wrong. Um, but all the vegan pages, when the when the election came around, they went so hard left and they were like so pro abortion that I was like, wait a second, wait a second. We love animals and we don't want to kill animals, but we have zero problem aborting a fetus. Feels like we're it, this is political, right? People yeah. like brag about it. Yeah, feel, but but on a vegan page, even worse. Like we're supposed to be life for everyone, right? So I started paying attention to that and then saw the divide and I saw all the vegans going to uh, essentially the left. I hate even saying the left and the right, but going hard that way, like super anti-Trump, fucking crazy, all that. And, and a little part of me was like, am I on the wrong side? <laughs> like, and yeah. it, it's so crazy that that's what, <laughs> but I just kept looking. And I was like, am I on the, like, am I on the wrong side? We've done this for so long, Right. Like, this is how, like, especially living in Montana, like, seeing everyone go out and hunt, that's how they get their food, and it's like, now I need to be part of this processed food that comes from other countries and goes through all this shit, and, or I could just go out and shoot an elk and then be okay, right? So I, I started, I started thinking and then started adding up my back problems and my, my, my mind didn't feel as sharp, and I slowly, like, eased back on and started to feel really good, and I was like, I don't, I don't know enough. You know, I, 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 yeah. I, I don't, I don't. And I, I think that like slaughterhouses suck. I think we can still all nice. fucking agree on that. But I also think there's a good way to do it. I agree with you. So like, I've, like I said, I've been on this uh, animal based diet for a very long time and I highly recommend it. And um, I think there is a very strong way to do it, but you have to do it the right way. And I do believe in grass fed, grass finished, all beef. Um, bison um, or hunting your own meat. I do not believe in eating the processed meat. Yeah. Eating, eating if, if you're eating meat that was grain fed, I don't believe in wagyu. Wagyu is sp- supposedly the like highest grade quality. I don't believe in eating wagyu. I think it's one of the worst things you can eat because it is grain fed. Grains are horrible for you. So that is m- just my take on it. And I was vegan for a long time, and I've, a lot of people around me, I was pescatarian, vegetarian, vegan, all yeah. for this a long time, but. I also feel like I got back in touch with more of my alpha side. Like, like let's be honest. You, eat, you, I want you to pull up a picture of a person that only eats meat, and then pull up a picture of a vegan. Yeah, and that, and that, that was my, sort of my other thought too. Was like, it just seems like break it down as basic and as simple as possible. It just sort of seems like 
the, the, it's this, it's the really soft side. And I think that's the biggest thing that we're losing is we're losing like real leadership in America. I think all around just real leaderships out the window. And I think that because we don't have real leadership, I mean, the same thing that I, me with the companies really like I wasn't leading. So it was like creating all this gray area for employees and me like letting them watch me make decisions was always like, well, if he, if he's not certain right now, then I'll start to make decisions. And I think a lot of people in a lot of aspects need leadership. They need that alpha. They need that, they need that, uh, mass toxic masculinity or whatever the fuck they call it. But that, that masculine, like, Hey, we need a decision made right now. Who's, who's going to step up and make that decision. And I think that's what alpha is. You look at like Florida, for example, Ron yeah. DeSantis crushing dude. That's what we need. Exactly. Everywhere. Every, yeah. I would personally vote Ron DeSantis over Trump 24. Me too. 100%. Because Trump Trump's a fucking madman. He is. And that's the problem. Is well, he's, he's like, an asshole. And he's an asshole. He's a madman. He he has too many downsides that, like, he's just out of control. I 100% agree with you. Like, I, I've... Yeah. I mean, I just... I, dude, he I, just I knows, like, more. dude, he just puts his foot down and says how it is. And, like... Is but he's going to do something weird? But for me, my problem with... I'm talking about DeSantis. Oh. I agree with that. But I also think that for me, why I don't believe in... Like, why I like, I like Trump, of course. Of course, Trump over Biden for me. Yeah. Um, But I'm not really a Republican. I'm a libertarian. Yeah. But I also am in the fact of where I think Trump is not the right fit. No, he's not a president. He's not. And that's, the, pr- not. that's the problem. There's too like, many people that hate him now. That it's like, way it's just going to cause people. Yeah, problems yeah, yeah. again. Yeah. And because he, he's... He is also an entertainer and he, he knows how to like, I mean, the same thing, like when we speak in front of crowds, any of us, like we change you, a little bit when you see the crowd starting to get like uh sleepy, it's like, oh, I'm gonna hit him with something like a little risque <laughs> that everyone's gonna be like, what the fuck did he just say? And all of a sudden the crowd's back and that's how he is. Like if he sees like all of a sudden it's like, oh, we need to fire these people up. He'll just say something fucking crazy. Yeah. And I, but it's I also not, that's think, not a president. I also <laughs> think there should be an age limit on the presidency. 100%. Like, like, why the fuck is a 74-year-old man controlling me, like, even my life at fucking 20? He doesn't even know where he's at, bro. And he doesn't believe in cryptocurrency? That's a big one for me. He doesn't believe in cryptocurrency. He doesn't believe in cryptocurrency? No, he That's hates it. it. He, he might know something different about it. That's he all might, He might, but I, I do know. not believe in... I don't believe someone 50... Like, I think there should be a limit of, like, 50. Because you're not caught up nah, in relevant no, time. 60? Bro, I, I, I think 50. You're, like... I'm I'm almost forty, yeah. In but, ten, you, but in ten years, I'm gonna go through so much more shit, and I think that like. But seventy four. That's no. That's too. That's too old, I'm, <laughs> bro. I'm I'm fucking. I'm going for fifty right now, right? I'm just saying. So like, I, I yo, think I think both of the motherfuckers that ran last were well, they were yeah. 70, 74 74 and like seventy eight. Seventy, yeah. se- yo, seventy fucking eight is I'm trying to control. Up, I'm sticking up for fifty, bro. Okay. <laughs> so me in twelve years. Well, you don't look almost fifty. I got twelve more years. <laughs> I got twelve more years. That's, I mean, that's that's shorter than you know. Yeah. The previous. Give me twelve years, and like, I feel like I'll be a lot more responsible in twelve years. Like, I need twelve more years to work through shit, and then I feel like it'd be appropriate. Like, I think fifty to sixty is like a really, really good age because you've been through shit, right? You, you have that wisdom. Yeah. Facts. Let me tell you one of the, the one of the biggest things that I've respected about you and your journey the entire time. I love. I love it. This is nice honestly, <laughs> honestly, this is one of the biggest things I've respected. Like I can say, I've said this to everybody and it's like one of the biggest things that I've respected about you and I honor you for it. And I tell people all the time, I tell people all the time, this same thing you have said from day one, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. You're just fucking doing it. And like, I say that like strong and firmly because people come to me and like, I, I get it kind of like how you get it is like. They expect me to know what I'm doing or they expect me to know what I have or expect me to know something. And there's this expectation on me. And I'm sent back like, I don't have any fucking idea. Yeah. I have no fucking clue what I'm doing here, why I'm doing this right now or why I'm doing this. It's like, I don't fucking know. Yeah. I'm just good at something and that something happens to be paying me. And you've said that from day one. I've, I've watched many videos of yeah. you where you're like, I say that's like the, the I don't know I what think I'm doing. Out of everything I say, that's the thing I say the most. It's like I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. Zero. Zero clue what I'm doing. Every every room I step into, uh, I, I never know what I'm doing. Right. Bro, I love that. it. 
She just had no fucking idea or clue what the but fuck But I, I think doing. that one of the reasons I say that so much is because, like, I want other people to realize, like, oh, if he doesn't know and he can figure it out. It's okay. And, like, I also tell people all the time, I'm not fucking smart. Like, if you play back this audio, I've, I, I, have, I have 33 words in my vocabulary. <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> the, the two things we lead off the, co- the first, yeah. like, live coaching call, like, once everyone signs up for the group and we get them in. It's, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, nope. and I'm not very smart. People are like, wait, what did I just wait, sign up for? Wait, why did I sign up for a guy's, I'm, and, and that's what I say. is like, listen, I'm not very smart, but I try really fucking hard, and I'm persistent, right? So, like, if I can't get in the front door, I try the side door. If I can't get in the side door, I realize there's a window. If the window's locked, there's well, fucking you, roof access. I'm sorry, but and you ain't fitting through a window. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you ain't fitting through listen, a fucking I'm, window. I'm on a diet right <laughs> now, man. Testicle diet, and then you I'm going to go through the <laughs> testicle diet. Where do you even buy <laughs> testicles? I'm going to go home and be like, Dana, here's my diet. And she's like, testicles and brain? What <laughs> happened in, in Arizona? <laughs> No, I, I just genuinely respect that because I relate to that because for the longest time, the pressure of me, um, the pressure of my life, I have two kids, you know, I have a wife and it's like everything along these lines. And it's like, I have to still maintain a social media presence mm-hmm. to build my business. I still have to grow myself somehow. I still have to be home at five o'clock to watch my kids yeah. and help my kids to put them in bed. And I also have to be up at 5 a.m. to still hit the gym to try and be in good shape and these pressures. And it's like, for the longest time, I just, like, was sitting back, and I was like, I'm trying to fulfill everyone else's needs of my life. And then when I finally realized that the only need I have to fulfill is my life for me, and the pressures don't matter, and that I it's okay to not know, because I promise you, the people that you listen to, that you think that know what the fuck they're doing, yeah. they don't. The fucking Robert Kiyosaki, the fucking Grant Cardone, the... The Robert Patterson, or whatever that that fucking guy, whatever the fuck you know, the fucking what Rob you from Bailey, Twilight? the fucking I, I Twilight. That Twilight guy, <laughs> like the dude from Twilight has no, no fucking clue. The Patterson, the Patterson guy, the, the oh the, Jordan Peterson, that yeah, that <laughs> not guy. even close. Exactly. <laughs> I love how far you were from Jordan Peterson. Exactly, Robert Patterson, Jordan Peterson. My right. point exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. My point exactly. None of them know what the no, fuck they're doing. But no. every one of them take advantage of every day. Yep. Yes. And, and that's what yep. it comes we down conquer, to. We conquer, we achieve, yep. we become successful in successful. I always quotate, like put quotation marks on successful because I'm still not successful in my life. And so it's like, you just like, no one knows what the fuck they're doing. Like, just like gotta try learn that and be okay with it. Yeah, that, that's the thing too. If I could just add to that, like being successful, like it's good that you put it in quotes because it's relative, right? Yeah, it's a sliding scale. Like if you're always progressing, I think that's what's fucked up with people right now is they're judging their success based on what they see you doing or him doing or him doing, yeah. and then they don't value themselves. Just get better every yeah. day. These podcasts that I've been doing lately have been made me realize that my own doubts have become from myself. Yeah, and like that's it's like this podcast alone has just grown me because it's like I don't have to be the person that everyone thinks I am. Yeah. And that's the greatest that's the greatest it's part a cool, of life. It's a cool it's, realization. It's a cool realization. I, and you're older than me, so I'm like I'm very old. <laughs> you're not I'm that old. old. <laughs> but you're older than me, so like you've probably gone through what I'm going through now and I'm sitting yeah. back and I'm like, I don't know how much money is a lot of money. How much money do I have to make? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? And all this little little bullshit. And I'm just like like for the first time in the last few days I've been hit in the face. I've been punched in the face the last two days. Like, not with bad shit, with just realizations that, like, it's it's been crazy. It's okay to not know. And that is why we started this podcast called The DNA of a Man, because me and him, we just like to drink together and have fun and have conversations. But you know what? Let's just talk about being a man. Yeah. What the pressures are. What we are. What it is. We just had so many of those conversations that it's like. Every day. Dude, we need to start filming this. We exactly that was yeah. that was literally this is this part of how I started because we don't know what it is to be a man, but we're gonna figure it out along the way. Yeah, and so we want to interview people that. Well, we I think, think that's are cool. that's the shitty thing is right. Like like if you think of a male role model, who is there? It's fucking crazy, right? Like think of a celebrity male role model. Like you're like that's a man. Well, I used to think Will Smith until he smacked Chris Rock in the face. <laughs> really? Will Smith? Wants you to but, think I mean, I'd go with The Rock. The Rock is what I'd go with. 
right now, anyway. No, he's a fu- dude. He backed Biden. He he's did. A he's, that's why he's, I lost so much. They got, he's a fucking put. They that's got something on so the rock. Oh, yes. dude. Yeah, the rock was on an island with some somebody. He ate he a baby. Something. Yeah, he ate a baby yeah. or something. Because when he makes those videos, it's not him. He's mm. like, hey guys. COVID scare like it's like what the <laughs> he's fuck he's got his who, mask on who still? is this guy right now like right? it's you can tell the videos where he's not him and and we've seen what three of them now where it's like oh someone made you say all that shit yeah, right that and that and and like I hate to be one of those Hollywood conspiracy theory dudes but like come on that's how you control people man I'm gonna it's tell like, you right now the reason I love this group right here is because none of us can be bought no bro fuck you yeah. that's what I'm saying like fuck you like you, we can't be bought. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. And that, I'm gonna tell you, that's the greatest player in the game. And like, I play chess a lot. I have chess pieces tattooed all over me. Yeah, chess a lot. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest player in the chess game is the pawn. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I'll go up against anybody because I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm just not afraid. Is he challenging you to a chess match? I don't no, even know no, how to play no. chess, but I felt like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I meant like, like genuinely, like, like we're not afraid. Like none of us are yeah. afraid. They might have more money, yeah, but they're afraid to lose it. Yeah, we're not, and yeah, that's I'm, why I think we can that always these, restart if we have this to. people, these group of people, and this understanding of life that we have. We're here to grow. Yeah, and we're here to we're, we're here to challenge because. We're not afraid of anything. We're not afraid of anyone. That's why I only interview people like y'all guys, because we're just not afraid of of yeah. the Biden administration or Go, whatever. Going, the fuck going it is. back to that, I want to I want to circle back to the um. I want to circle back. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, <laughs> I want to I want to I would like to go back to the successful thing. Uh, my whole life, I've never felt successful. Right, for some reason, over the last year. Like I'm confident saying I feel successful right now. I love that. Like it's the first time, and it, and I'm I'm 38, and Good I for I you. feel successful. And part of it is because like I realize like I don't I, like I I get money. I like it, but I also don't give a fuck about it. Like it's not going to compromise who I am. And I've realized that that success because I think it's so it's such like a weird thing that can like it can change your compass. And I'm finally at a point in time where I'm like, now nah, my compass can't be changed by money, right? And I'm I'm starting to appreciate like me digging into who I am, figuring all that shit out. And I've realized like the progress of it all, as long as I have progress in the right direction, I'm like, no, that's success to me. And I used to think success was like, I need to make as much money as fucking Andy Frisella, or I need to do this, or I need to be as impactful as this person, or I need to, you know, my music needs to sit on iTunes for fucking this long as number one or whatever, right? And now I've realized I was like, nah, man, like I'm coming out with a fucking folk country album what? on May, oh, 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 my first sim- single on May 1st. And I'm like, I feel successful because like, I don't even give a fuck if no one plays it. Like good m- for you. Me making it like was dude, a success. Me making it. I came back and I was on top of the world. And like, I didn't even like really let you guys hear it. I was just like pumped that I made a fucking folk album. Is this the first time you've announced the album date? Uh, I think I have on my Instagram a little bit. Uh, so May first is my single, yeah. May first coming out, new album. Yeah. Be prepared, be ready. No, I love that, man. I, man, dude, I applaud you. I commend you because, but like, success I'm is a cool learning. thing to feel because, like, I just never felt proud because, like, if you look around, or and the same thing with you, right? Like, I know you always want to get better. I know you always have bigger goals, right? Like, if you buy a fucking couple rental properties, you're like, next I want a fucking apartment complex. And then after an apartment complex, I want fucking an industrial complex. And then after that, I want, and it's like, they just gets bigger. Always. And for some reason, like, now I'm like, nah, man, as long as I'm on the journey, that's success to me. I love it. Like, as long as I'm on it, like, man. even if I'm failing, like, as long as I, I wake up every day and I start ripping, I'm like, fucking yeah, I'm a successful, man. Man, well, honestly, I'll be honest with you, like, for the first time in a long time, it's like, Taking me a long time to be like, like I'm I'm in the same boat. Like I've never felt successful in my life. Yeah, well, you are, man. I mean, just so you know, <laughs> maybe I am. <laughs> I don't really fucking know. Yeah. But I'm okay with it, not knowing right now, because you got a few years on me. So it's like it's like if I if it takes me this that long to become successful in my eyes, I'm okay with it. But I just I've never felt that feeling of like I'm successful, but I've felt the feeling of gratitude. Mm-hmm. And so I'm OK with not feeling successful because yeah. I'm gra- I'm grateful yeah. for what I've been able to build. But I know that if out of all people and everything else, 
like I can change the world. So I'm going to try my best. Hell yeah. Like and that. so like, bro, I just, I just applaud you for the, if you, if you actually have felt successful, I feel it. It's, it's a weird feeling. Dude, man. I can only imagine like, because I'm so, I'm terrified of that feeling. I'm so, so I used, terrified. I used to, th- I used to think that the second I felt successful, it was over. I, it was over. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I thought I'd become an asshole and I'd become like super cocky and all these different things. And it's like, I'm still a little cocky, but I, f- I think I found success and it's like, it's just a different success than I thought was what I was going to find. Right. And like, I think finding the success was like, Oh, I got a fucking billion dollars or like I put like weird success goals. And now that I've sort of redefined my goals and like redefined what matters to me, my personal brand book and like success is different to everyone. Once again, going back to the personal brand book is it's different. Like it's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for you. Like there's people out there that like, I know that, make fucking $55,000 a year. And they're like, fuck yeah. Like, this is all I need. And that's like, fuck it. Like, dude, f- yes, man. Like, I don't yes. want to shit on that at all. I don't want to tell you any different. Like, Living your best fucking life. Yes, man. So, like, as long as I think you're on your path and you're aligned with your path, that's success, man. But And, and once again, like, I'm not saying that you need to say that you're successful now, but you are. I'm telling you right now, as your elder, I've never said that before, but that felt good to say. As your elder, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot, and I respect it and I love it because I've been in this journey for a long time, and I've been talking to Derek about it a lot. Like I've been sitting back, like 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 I don't know where I'm at because my success level dictates like other people's success yeah, level. I understand maybe. that. Yeah, and that's like when they don't feel successful, that's like kind of my like boundary. It's like. Yeah. Like, but I keep adding people. <laughs> so, like, it's always continuously growing. So, I keep adding people, and they're like, oh, I'm not successful. And so, I feel like my success level has always dictated other people's success level. Yeah. But, like, in the last, like, the last, like, literally, like, I would say five days, it's kind of changed. I love yeah. it. Because I've, we've interviewed a lot of crazy cool people of, like, success fun, that are highly successful, and they've been basically telling me. People we've looked up to. Yeah, people we look up to, they've basically been telling me, like, no, you're successful. You're just a fucking, you're just. You're a maniac, man. Exactly. <laughs> you're a fucking maniac, bro. Exactly. I, yeah. I didn't know where to finish that. I appreciate you maniac. finishing that. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just cool to see something different on a different spectrum. And so, yeah. man, I applaud you. I appreciate you. And that's, Thank you, man. So that is, are. that's incredible to understand. And, and um, all I want to ask you is if you have one tip or trick oh my god I or hate this advice question. i feel so much pressure when it's one <laughs> i feel like this like defines my life is this one tip what it means in the dna of a man what it means to become the dna of a man what it means to become the person that it means to control your life especially as a man what can you offer to them I think in every situation, just like the accountability, I think accountability is like the biggest word for me. And it's like the accountability, the responsibility of knowing that whatever the situation is, you have an impact, you have in control over it. Right. And I think that that's the most dangerous thing for a man is to resort to the victim mentality uh, of, of saying like, oh, this is I can't control this because you can always like people are like, well, I can't control if I get cancer. So you can control your fucking mindset. You can control how you affect, how you inspire other people around you. You can, like, there's so much you can control. To say that I'm just on this fucking ride and I have no control, I feel like that's that's the responsibility of a man. Um, that's the responsibility of anyone, honestly. But it's, it's a masculine qu- uh, quality of admitting that you're in control and admitting that you have a responsibility to be in control. I love that. Man, that's epic. So I, I this sucks because I... I I was trying to end it and I could talk all day. But I want to ask you, uh, well, you know, shit, I forgot it. <laughs> no, I'm like, honestly, I gotta take a leak, dude. No, yeah, I can see you're shaking your leg over here. But no, I wanted to ask you, like, you know, when talking about that side of things, it's like, how, fuck, man, I just got so many questions for you. We're gonna end it there. We're gonna come. We're gonna end it there. Oh God, and some, the only reason right. is because we're. I'm gonna get you. Well, back then I have to come back. This. Yeah. Yeah. Podcast. I so say we head I up can... to Montana next time. Ooh. Oh fuck yeah! Let's do it. I got these same microphones. Okay, <laughs> so I love it. We're gonna head up there so I can ask you these questions because I have so many questions for you because, I, dude, okay, your mindset's incredible to me, Thank you. and I love that. And um, 
I just want to say thank you for watching if you've watched this whole video. Also, please go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and comment maybe someone that we should interview next. Go ahead and comment what you think we talk about. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, turn on that notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a podcast. And you know what? Just thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Peace.